This video will give you an overview of the trend edge type tools and some of the common settings used across these tools. The trend edge tools on the CVX are edge based tools. However, instead of doing a single edge inspection like a standard edge tool would, it will break the main inspection region up into many smaller segments. It will then perform an edge inspection in each one of the individual segments. This allows the tool to detect the minimum and maximum edge points or widths between two edges, performing a trend analysis of the profile of the target. Essentially, it's like many edge measurements in a single tool. The size and shift of these segments can be freely set in the tool according to the application needs. The three types of trend edge tools that are available are trend edge position, trend edge width, and trend edge stain. The trend edge position tool will profile the edge of a surface to detect the minimum and maximum edge points. It can also be used to detect the best fit line or circle from the detected edge points. The trend edge width tool will perform multiple edge width measurements of the target profile. An edge width is a distance between two edges, like an outer or inner diameter. The tool can detect the minimum and maximum width of a target. The trend edge stain tool is similar to the trend edge position tool where it will profile the edge of a surface, but it performs a more detailed analysis of this information. What the trend edge stain tool will do is it will create a reference model shape from the detected edge information. This model can be a best fit line, circle, oval, or free curve. Once the model shape is created, it will compare the actual edge detected points to this reference model shape and confirm if they deviate too far from the ideal shape. One example is short shot or flash on a plastic cap, as you can see here. Now we'll go over some of the common settings that you'll see in all the trend edge type tools. One of them is trend direction. This is the direction for which to shift the segments on the main inspection region and will dictate how the region will be broken up into smaller segments. In this example, you can see it is set from top to bottom, so it will break the main region up here, as you can see in blue, into many smaller segments starting at the top and shifting its way down towards the bottom. You can also set the direction from left to right, which will start at the left and again break the region up into many, many smaller segments going from left to right. The scan direction for the edges will always be perpendicular to the trend direction. If you're using an arc or a ring type inspection region, it will be broken up in a clockwise manner, kind of like a clock. Two other common settings with the trend edge tools is the segment size and segment shift. The segment size is the size of the individual scan box as it breaks the region down into many small pieces. So in this case, in this example, it is set for 10. So 10 pixels wide is the individual box and it will perform the edge measurement. It will, the segment shift is how much shift in pixels it will do when it performs the next segment measurement. So in this example, the size is set for 10, the shift is set for 5. So it will perform that measurement for as many segments as needed throughout the inspection region. As you're adjusting the size and shift of the segment, you can get a visual representation of the size and shift uh, on the screen here. If I zoom in on it, you can see here in this uh, orange, yellowish box and light blue box, it just gives you a visual representa representation of the size and shift that you're currently setting. The smaller you make the size, the more sensitive it will be to pick up on smaller details and the more segments there could potentially be. If the size is equal to or smaller than the shift, you will actually see on the screen all the individual boxes as you can see here. So we have a size of 5 right now and a shift of 5, so it's literally shifting that up, breaking that region up into all these pieces, and you're seeing each individual piece. Most typically, the shift is set to a smaller number, so there's a little bit of overlap and no parts of the target will be missed. The next setting here is max segments, which is another setting you'll see across the trend edge tools. And it's the maximum number of segments that it will use to break up the region. So as you can see under our current condition here, it actually is set for 100. And it uh, started breaking the region up, and you can see how it just kind of stops. So it ran out of segments. So there's obviously more than 100 segments in this example. So we can just simply raise this number up uh, to what is needed. It can go up to 5,000 total segments as needed according to the application. So you can change that number. You can see our 
is now covering the whole part. If you want to get an idea of how many segments it's being broken up into, let me just click this little numeric icon here. And as we're setting this up, you can it'll give you an idea of the detected segments. So right now, you can see it's 209 is the segments. And there's 199 detected segments. So in other words, there's 199 of them detected in actual width there's 209 total segments. So as you change your size and shift, it will change the number of se segments accordingly. Here is an example of a ring type inspection region when you're setting the size and shift. In a ring or arc type uh, example, it's actually in degrees, not pixels. So it's like a 10 degree slice of pie, if you will, and it shifts by five degrees. And then you set your settings accordingly. In addition to the common trend edge parameters that we've just shown you, you would also set up your standard edge detection conditions themselves as well, according to the application.